All right, and today we have the finals matches, finals one and two for the Haunted signature event that happened just recently. And I'm joined by Seth from 1028A. Hello, very exciting matches here. Yeah, and actually on the Red Alliance, we have our 16th seed. That's not common at all. That's the first time in years a 16th seed, you know, is actually in the finals of a signature event. And they're able to do extremely well here. You know, spoilers alert, uh, they win the tournament against the second seed. They eliminate the first seed quite early on in the round of 16. So we'll get to see just how well their strategy is. So you can see pretty early on here, uh, what's giving the 16 seed the advantage is they took this Auton for this first match here. That six point bonus, or eight, eight point bonus is like a massive advantage. High correlation between Auton win and success. Yeah, and the start here is you know pretty pretty good, good from uh, both lines actually, but I think red plays fairly well, right? Defending that, that corner in the pos positive corner. I noticed every single match, right, in these in these eliminations have been extremely uh, chaotic here The in the positive corner area. Every every team, all four teams, dashes to the positive corner pretty much immediately. You'll notice this red alliance doesn't actually take... Um, like, they're sort of taking calculated risks here, where this team in the corner could be trying to clear out that goal and get more secured, uh, but they know that they're up Auton, so they're going to be taking a lot less risk where they sort of risk losing that third goal. So just yeah, keeping really that smart. calculated advantage. Mm -hmm. And also one thing is these teams aren't actually filling their goal up to the brim. As you can see, uh, both red and blue alliance here only have upwards of three rings on their goals, right? They're, they're not really too worried about how many ever rings they have on there after their top ring, because that's just plus one. And they want to, you know, uh, maximize on the top rings that they can get. So that's why they're, you know, going to be focusing a little bit more on on wall stakes here, and this is a perfect time for this red team to to go for the the wall stake. But I think they're you know a little they're, they're going to play a little bit more safe here, and and blue is going to you know try to take advantage and try to score that wall stake. You can see that super contested far far wall stake. I wonder. I feel like a lot of teams contest the far wall stakes more than the close ones, just because they know that they're going to get defended by these positive corners, like whoever sitting in the positive corner is way more likely to play defense on them yeah and towards the end here you see i think either the, something gets jammed in their drive or their or their drive uh screw joint loosens itself and they're 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 completely jammed and as the last second counts down the blue alliance both teams are able to get a top ring onto that onto the uh their um what do you call it? on their respective wall stakes so that's pretty impressive. If I'm not mistaken, that's a 10-point swing in the last, like, two seconds of the match. So, yep. super valuable for yeah, Blue Alliance but unfortunately, here, but still, yeah, matter. still is not able to, you know, swing the tides of the match here with the Red Alliance taking Autominus. If I remember correctly, it was, it was within auto, right? Like, this match score? Uh, yes, this match score was within auto. Crazy. Yeah, however, and the then, next one was not. Mm -hmm. And Blue did take auto for this next match, I think. Yeah. So here's our finals two match. So they only played two finals, and you know, uh, red hit a pretty clear sweep here as the 16th seed. So this year we're seeing a clear difference from the past previous years. Previous years usually, if you're the first seed or you know, even the second, right? Uh, when when you're playing your round of 16 match, that's that's a match where you're basically testing your strategies for the rest of the the competition. You're not really worried about what's going to happen, right? You're basically just you know seeing what's going to what, what, what you should be playing, right, in semifinals and finals, right? and But right. here, but here you're really needing to lock in for that first match, which is kind of funny against against the worst teams, like the quote-unquote worst teams, of course, because every team here is, you know, really, really good. Yeah, we were, if you were watching the live, you'll maybe remember, we were kind of talking about the progression of teams at events, specifically signature events. R16 is super competitive now. It doesn't matter what event you go to. Uh, you're going to see a lot of upsets this year. And sort of that's likely due to just teams getting better on average, which is great to see. I love watching the Vex community, you know, sort of teach itself and grow. Yeah, I still think that there, there can definitely be improvements being made, right? Because we we saw a lot of, uh, of Wall Street play, right, from China and, uh, you know, other are the, some other tournaments, I feel like. But here we saw like no wall stick play in finals. And that's just because I think these teams are just so coordinated in, you know, defending just like happening right here and also, you know, stealing those goals. So definitely. Also, I would say teams that haunted were a lot less focused on clearing out positive corners. Like 
almost every single match there was a big mess of rings in positive corners like you can see here do you think that was a that mattered a lot though because i feel like i feel like i mean these are still scored though right because they're still crossing that plane right i would say it does end up mattering in the end just because you're losing a lot of time to having to sort of mess around with those positive corners that could have been saved just by claiming it like solid in the first part of the match but you know that's our strategy i guess there are others out there and obviously these are winning sig so very very competitive yeah and this and this blue alliance there drops that goal which is kind of a kind of a blunder there but unfortunately red is is unable to take take advantage of that however red still takes this match right just because you know they are they were able to gain control of both of these positive corners as we saw earlier here they fought over that corner for the entirety of the match they were just there in a, in a, in a stalemate that kind of reminds me of of over under right of over uh, yeah, those definitely. alleys in California, they're just being in that alley for the entire match. Whenever you, uh, whenever you have a large amount of points that can happen in a small area on the field, it definitely gets pretty exciting. We saw that with uh, you know rollers at the end of spin up. We saw that with the middle of the field at the start of autons and tipping points. So, yeah, it's very, yeah, it's very, very like very chaotic there as well, and so much, so much defense play being, uh, being like seen as well. So one thing I do want to point out is that I feel like the strategy from Red is somewhat unorthodox here, where they're actually taking both positive corners and still getting away with a win, even though they don't necessarily have full goals in them. And that's more so, like, I feel like that's just from denying the Blue Alliance being able to double any of their goals more than anything. Yeah, I think at this point in the tournament, right, this far in the tournament, Blue Alliance is very, they're very, like... They, they think that they need those positive corners to win because, you know, from what we've seen before in previous matches, right, it's so unlikely to win without without positive corners, right? Right. Where so, they could be, in this case, since they're up auto, focusing on just scoring with what they have. Yeah, yeah I, th I think they might have forgotten about that because I feel like Red really is not in a really good possession. Even though they have those positive corners, right, they have so little rings on them. They're so little. While Blue can yep. really be taking advantage of all of these non-filled uh, wall stakes right and and also blue blue lens has objectively better wall stick mechanisms and it just are able to more effectively score on those so they should be taking advantage of those one thing to note also is all the red rings are on the negative side of the field right now so that would involve if red wanted to score more to get more yeah, you know, so rings true. doubled they would have to leave those corners most likely yeah it's so true today looking looking right here right, if we even even go back to a minute basically right this is this is such a good time for for blue to you know just uh, step back and and just take a look at the field and start playing playing their game right really start playing those wall stakes because you know red how many rings can they really get uh, maybe one here probably not though cuz that's like far in the corner two right one two maybe it just basically two rings right that are close to them in their quadrants yep so it's just important to kind of analyze that field as a team. Just make sure you are you have at least one person, maybe not the driver, that's just kind of doing a little bit of risk assessment, making sure that it's actually worth it to play the strategy you're playing still. Yeah. Not being and, scared mm -hmm. to step away from that mid-match. Yeah, like we were saying uh, in the stream earlier today, you know, the past seasons, right, a driver could be just dominant and completely you know, determine the facts, uh, the, the, the fate of a match, right? But you know, this season, it's completely, it's completely different. It has to be a combined effort of the entire drive team, right? You have your drive coaches need to be able to, you know, figure out what exactly should the driver be doing at this moment. Yeah, it takes a lot of people to drive a robot, not just the uh, not just the driver, not just the guy holding the controller. Yeah, well, what do you think will happen in the in the later sigs, like, uh, like what do you call it? Speedway that's happening next weekend? If I had to guess. I think we're going to see, okay, so goal rushes still happened at this SIG, right? But they were kind of few and far between. And that could be because the bracket kind of got busted up a little early. But, um, you know, those goal rush arms, I feel like we're going to start seeing those a little more often. I think we're going to see people tipping goals a little more. Um, and then, if I had to guess, most matches are going to start following a flow of each team takes one corner, respectively, and clears it out, like, all of the way, just so that they have that security. Because it really... Uh, it doesn't benefit you much, I feel like, to take both positive corners unless you're this red alliance here and you're able to pull it off. But it's a little more risky. So I feel like we're going to see teams sort of finding that easier and more reliable flow to win matches. Yeah, right. I agree with you. Well, these were two very exciting 
finals matches and props to this 16th seed for taking home the tournament from stealing the stealing tournament champions at haunted as the lowest seed in the bracket for eliminations and um something else what was it they got another award oh sportsmanship is that correct sportsmanship i believe yeah showing great sportsmanship of course <laughs>